And now I get to introduce one of my closest friends, uh, no stranger to Oaks Church, Pastor Dan and Rachel um, uh, were on staff here at Oaks Church uh, at the same time Kara and I were the very first time back in 2007. Uh, Dan was the, the student pastor here and uh, just really... We had an incredible, have an incredible, had an incredible, have a history of incredible youth ministry here. And uh, Dan's been a big part of that legacy. Uh, he's all, he also knows what it is to follow Pastor Scott Wilson in ministry, which not many people know. Uh, pastor Dan followed Scott as the youth pastor. And uh, so he knows the big shoes that I've, I've stepped in to try and fill. Uh, but Pastor Dan has an incredible word. He's at Grace Church. He leads Grace Church in Houston, Texas. And, uh, and so he's come from Houston to bring a word to us tonight. So will you get on your feet and show some love to Pastor Dan Hunter. Forty-two. Forty-two. <laughs> yes. Well, it's it's great to be here tonight, and I just feel so honored. Thank you, Pastor Chris and Kara, for allowing me to be here. I just feel so honored to be in here. This is uh, our home, our family. We just feel so connected. There's so many his There's so much history. So many uh, people that we consider family. It's just great to be here. And uh, you know, like uh, Pastor Chris just said, uh, it, it's an honor to be here. I mean. Uh, also to have, uh, you know, Scott and Jenny, Pastor Scott and Jenny here, and uh, we honor them. Uh, they've been our pastors. They are. And then, obviously, you guys have phenomenal leaders in Pastor Chris and Kara. They're known all over the world, loved, and uh, you guys are privileged. I think sometimes we don't know how good we have it, or we sometimes can take things for granted, not intentionally. But let me just tell you, you could never take them for granted because they are just such incredible people, and you are blessed. You are blessed. Can you do one more time? Just give them a hand. Thank you for allowing me to be here. I want to dive in as, as fast as I can. We don't have a whole lot of time. So if you have your Bible, open up to 2 Kings chapter 6. 2 Kings chapter 6. And we're going to kind of uh, park there for just a moment to kind of engage in what Scripture would, would teach us tonight and maybe pull out some principles that that you can take home with you tonight to, uh, to, to really encourage yourself, but also to stand on and build faith towards. Here's what I know about this church uh, after spending a decade here and being connected here for so long afterwards is God's not done here at the Oaks. How many of you believe that? In, in other words, the best is yet to come here. As great as yesterday was, man, I know that Pastor Chris and Kara and, and this team uh, that all of you believe your best days are still ahead, which is saying something when you look back at all that God has done and you can know that God will continue to do what God uh, wants to do through you. And here's what's great about God is he'll work in you and at the same time work through you. You know what I'm saying? And, and so it's not just what God's doing in the oaks. It's what God's doing through the oaks around the world. And so we stand on that. And tonight, if you're here and you're in a situation that just kind of seems, uh, you know, uh, difficult or seems like, like you're outnumbered or you're in a situation that, that, quite honestly, you don't know how to fully navigate, I just want to tell you tonight that I believe God's given us a word uh, and I just feel like he's dropped this passage on my heart for us tonight and I want to dive into that. And here's what I want to encourage you before we even get too deep is that God makes miracles out of messes and mistakes. And if you're here tonight and you're like in the middle of a mistake, can I tell you how much God loves you and, and how much he's for you and how he wants to do a miracle in your situation? But sometimes, I mean, we can kind of work through a mess that we didn't even cause. You ever been there and you just feel like you're in the middle of that? I want you to know that God wants to do a miracle in the middle of whatever mess we're in and whatever mess you find yourself looking at or whatever mistake you've stumbled into, God's here to do a miracle tonight. I want you to see this passage and uh, I'll give you a quick background on it. Uh, and, and there's a king of Syria basically and what he's doing is he's trying to attack, he's at war with Israel, trying to attack Israel. And so every time he attacks, it's like Israel knew he was coming. And so scripture tells us that every time they would attack that all of a sudden, that the Israel army would raise up and defeat the king of Syria and all of their men, so much so that the king of Syria kind of got to a place and they were like, he was like, he gathered all of his, his inner, inner tribe in and, and he started telling them, hey, man, w w what's going on? It feels like someone is telling them our secrets. 
It's like we have a spy in our midst. So he gathers all of his leaders there and naturally he gets on Facebook and starts saying, anybody know what's going on, you know, because that's where all the truth comes out, right? He gets on Twitter, he's twit, twitting about it and stuff. And, and all of a sudden he's, he, he, he figures out as one of his, one of his men raises his hands and says, hey, I, I don't think it's anyone in this room. There's actually a prophet named Elisha who is like connected to God and he just knows things. It's weird. God speaks to him. And I think he's the one feeding Israel the information so much so that he ends up going, okay, where is this man named Elisha? Let's go find him and kill him. This is where we stumble into the story in 2 Kings 6. So if you have your Bible, you can look at it or you can look at the screen, either one. But 2 Kings chapter 6, here's what the Bible says. Go find out where he is, the king ordered. So I can send men and capture him. The report came back. He is in Dothan. Uh, and then it says, the Bible says that he sent, in verse 14, that he sent horses and chariots and a strong force there. They went by night and surrounded the city. So Elisha and his servant are asleep. This army, this brigade of soldiers encompasses where they are in the middle of the night. And then in verse 15, we find scripture says, when the servant of the man of God, Elisha, got up and went out the next morning, uh, an army with horses and chariots had surrounded the city. And he said, oh no, my Lord, what are we gonna do? You ever been there and just thought, I don't know what we're gonna do. I mean, maybe it comes out a little different, but I think that each one of us can find ourselves in a moment or a situation where we simply think, what in the world are we going to do? Man, everything's going south instead of north. It's going down and to the left rather than up and to the right. Man, I don't even know what's happening. This is where Elisha's servant is. The servant asked Elisha. And then in verse 16, you hear the prophet Elisha say, don't be afraid. I love that. Don't be afraid. And then he says this. He says, the, the prophet answered, those who are with us are more than those who are with them, which I love. Well, the uh, servant actually didn't really know what to think at that point. And so in verse 17, Elisha prayed and says, open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes and he looked, and this is so beautiful. He looked and he saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. As the enemy came down toward him, Elisha then prayed to the Lord, strike this army with blindness. So he struck them with blindness as Elisha asked. So here's what we've got. We've got the servant coming out and seeing this brigade of Syrian army and then all of a sudden, he prays to, his, to, to God for his servant to open his eyes. The servant opens his eyes and sees a vast army of heaven surrounding the army that surrounded them. I don't know if you've ever uh, lost something and couldn't find it. Anybody ever misplaced your phone? You, you go out and you don't know where your phone is. You feel like you're naked driving down the road, right? You know, I don't know what it is. We're addicted to that, right? And so I, I live in a household, like we got two girls and, and, and then obviously my wife, Rachel, and the, somebody's always losing something and it drives me crazy. They'll come to me and they'll say, dad, someone stole my pencil. <laughs> and I go, do you mean you, you misplaced it? They say, no, 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 someone stole it. I go, they stole your pencil. Stole it, yes. How do you know they stole it? Because it's not right there. And I just get aggravated. So now what I do is I say, okay, I'll tell you what, I'll get up and help you find. It. Yes, thank you. Someone stole it. And I said, first of all, I want you to think about this real quick. Do you think someone broke into our house, passed the TV, passed the jewelry, and all the different things that actually cost money and came in here just to steal your pencil? I don't know, but someone had to steal it. I said, okay, then I'll tell you what's going to happen. I'll help you find a pencil. But if I find a pencil, you pay me $300. Not only will you pay me $300, you're going to do the dishes for six months. Is that good? No, hold on. I said, well, if I were you, I'd go back and start looking. And then nevertheless, three minutes later, I found it. Where was it? It was on the edge of the counter. I said, did you not look there? And it was almost like it's hidden in plain sight. You ever, you ever thought about that? Like it was there, but I didn't see it. It was hidden in plain sight. Can I just tell you tonight, I just believe God wants to do a breakthrough for you. And whatever you're walking through, the answer is already there. It's just hidden in plain sight. You just haven't looked. You haven't seen it. You kind of overlook. It's really easy to overlook what God is really doing when all we see is what's right in front of us. 
But Elisha operated in faith where his servant operated in fear. In other words, what I want to tell you is your greatest victories are on the other side of your faith. How is your faith tonight? In the middle of whatever's going on in your business, in the middle of whatever's going on in your marriage, how is your faith? What I want to do is dive down a little bit in 2 Kings chapter 6 and give you a few principles that I feel like the Lord gave me to give to you uh, tonight to encourage you. And the first one is this right here. So if you have notes, you can write it down. If you got a phone, you can type it in or you can just stare at me. E either way, it all works. It's going to get inside you one way or the other, right? So number one is this right here. I got three thoughts that I just want to give you principles from this passage. Number one, the enemy may surround you, but he cannot stop you. The enemy may surround you, may feel surrounded, but he cannot stop you. And I want you to understand that the enemy does it. And anytime you do something for God, anytime you start trying to live right, anytime you, you step out in faith and start tithing when before you weren't, anytime you step out and trust God in a situation, it's almost like the enemy begins to attack. And Elisha's faithfulness, I mean, he, he, he took this water that was poisoned and purified it. He, he parted the Jordan River. In other words, Elisha was like step in step doing miracles and, and moments for people and, and being used by God. And then the enemy came to attack. Every time the Syrian army came, Elisha knew and he would tell him, but the enemy may surround you, but he cannot stop you. But I want you to get this. In this picture, this blows me away. There are three circles. There's Elisha and his servant. We always get that. We know exactly where we are. Man, you don't even know what's happening. Man, I got this coming against me. We, I, I, got more, I got more month than I do money. You know, like I, I don't even know how I'm going to get by with all of this. And, they got that. and then there's the circle around them that the servant could see. But what the servant couldn't see was there was a third circle around the enemy. In other words, quit only focusing on two circles, yourself and what the enemy's doing to you. Recognize the third circle. And I think for us, what you've got to see is no matter what's going on in your life, the enemy may surround you, but he cannot stop you. In other words, that which outnumbers you does not outnumber God. See, Elisha said, there are more with us than there are against us. But what the servant could only see is fear. What the servant could only see was the, the things that were happening and, and, and blowing all around him. He could only see and he was distracted. He couldn't see the other side of the circle. It reminds me of the, when our girls turned six, we took them to Chuck E. Cheese. Y'all know Chuck E. Cheese, right? That annoying place, y'all know that? Like they got a little store, you know, that you buy stuff, you get tickets that cost you a lot, but the tickets aren't, aren't worth a lot. You know what I'm talking about? You get tickets, you go to the store, you buy a lollipop, you end up spending like $963 for a lollipop. And your kid's going, this is so amazing. You spend over $1,000 on a glow stick that lasts about 20 seconds. You know what I'm talking about. So we go there for their birthday because they wanted to go. And, and so we go there. And, and I guess, you know, for your birthday, they, they put you in this money tube, this like enclosed little, little, it was just, you know, like a three foot by three foot box and they stick you in there. And there was another girl that were having, having her party there and they stuck her in there and and, uh, you know, they turn on the switch and all the money that was on the ground just started blowing up. And the girls looking around trying to grab all this stuff. And, and, and she couldn't really get, she walked out there with like, like, I don't know, $16 or something like that. You know, it, it wasn't much. It was just, but it's Chuck E. Cheese money. So it was really like three pennies. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so like my girls get ready to go in there and it just hit me. And I grab my girls and I pull them over here and I say, hey, listen to me. You're in this to win. You understand? <laughs> this isn't fun. You're going to win. And they said, okay. I said, I said what? okay. And I said, do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, okay, when the door opens, here's what you're going to do. You're going to go in there, look at the ground. Because they lay all the money on the ground. What you'll find is a bunch of ones and fives. That's worthless. Don't even mess with that. Don't get distracted by all that. That's just stupid stuff. What I want you to do is find the $10,000 one and step on it like that. <laughs> then find the 5000 one and step on it like that. And they go, okay. And so Jordan goes first. She goes in there and she's like putting on her little helmet and got all the things. And she's scared to death because she doesn't know what happened. And so I literally walk up to the glass cage and I tap on it. Tink, 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 tink. And I say, hey, right here, look at me. <laughs> Forget about, look at me. Don't worry about anybody else. I said, see that 10,000 right there? Step on it. You see that 5,000? Step on it. I said, now stay there. I said, look at me. Don't look down. Look at me. Don't look around. 
They flip the switch, and you only get 30 seconds. And she just stands there. And I go, don't move. Now slowly bend down and grab the 10,000 one. <laughs> Fold it and put it in your pocket. You got that? Now bend over here, get the 5,000 one, put this in your pocket. Now go have fun. <laughs> and it hit me that sometimes we get so distracted with everything that's going on that we don't stand on the foundation of the truth of God's word. Because no matter what's blowing around in your marriage or your business or your job, if you'll plant your feet firmly on what the word of God says, then nothing can distract you, nothing can bring you out of God's plan for your life. When you plant yourself, then you find the blessings and the favor that God wants to bring into your life. In other words, stand on the truth of God so that you don't fall on the lies of the enemy. Second thought real quick, and I only got a couple minutes. So let me give you the second thought real quick. Number two is breakthrough comes by operating in the spiritual, not the physical. Now, this one is because I want you to see this because what happens is the spiritual is more real than the physical. But sometimes all we can really grab a hold of is the physical. In other words, faith is the spiritual. Fear is, is the physical. Faith is the spiritual. Fear is the physical. Sometimes we think fear is the opposite of faith. Fear is not the opposite of faith. Fear is faith in the wrong thing. And anytime you're struggling with fear, you're putting your faith in the worst case scenario. Fear is faith in the wrong thing. Shift your faith from the wrong thing to the right thing. And so this sticks out to me. When I read this passage, here's what happens. Because you got to imagine how the servant felt. I want you to get this because the servant felt that there's more with us than again, no, not from where I'm standing. There's more happening to me than, 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 than there are anything for me. See, the servant could only see what was wrong. Elisha could see what was right. Now, this blows me away because here's the thing. If you are aware of God's presence, then what's threatening you does not intimidate you. I'm not saying it's not a big deal. But what I am saying is it doesn't shake the foundation by which you stand. But this blows me away when I read 2 Kings, and I really feel like God has this word for some of you in this place tonight, and that's this. Elisha's first response when the servant brought the problem to him was not to fix the problem. Do you see that? Elisha's first response was actually to address a bigger problem that he saw in the servant's faith. In other words, instead of dealing with the army, Elisha says, hold on just a second. Hey, there's more with you than there is against you. Do you not see that? I'll get to the other problem in a minute. This is a bigger problem. Because Elisha had just got a double portion from Elijah. And now he's looking at the servant going, man, I need you to operate at a higher level, to go further, to do more. In other words, there's more breakthrough, but you've got to step out in faith. And then all of a sudden he looks at him and he goes, Lord, you got to open his eyes. That's the biggest problem I see. He's operating too much in the physical and fear is taking over and he's not seeing the spiritual what's really going on. In other words, yeah, you got to have reality in what's happening around you. You got to have reality in the physical, but make no mistake about it. Quit putting a premium on the physical and start putting a premium on the spiritual. And so Elisha said, open up his eyes. And I just feel like some of us in this room, you're in situations and all you can see is the physical. But I just want to come tonight to encourage you. Open your eyes to see the spiritual impact. And all of a sudden, he prays for him. Then he says, Lord, open his eyes. And, and I, just, I just think that Elisha is saying, look, you, you can't cater to the physical. you got to develop some spiritual sensibilities. you gotta, you, you got to develop some spiritual sensitivity. And you got to begin to lean into that. That's why Ephesians tells us we battle not against flesh and blood, right? But against rulers, principalities of this dark world. That's the reason what we've got to recognize this. And this is the thing. You cannot fight a spiritual battle with physical weapons. And that's why this prayer meeting every Wednesday is so important. Because you can't fight what's going on in our culture. You can't fight what's going on in your business and in your family. You can't fight that with physical brainstorm meetings. Do we need wisdom? Yes. But understand, you can't fight a spiritual battle with physical weapons. In other words, you got to navigate this world with physical senses. And too often, here's our problem. What we think is this. We think that worship and prayer and reading our Bible are physical acts. Too often we think those things are physical. Why? Because I lift my physical hands. 
because I opened my physical mouth. But when all you see worship and prayer and Bible being led by the Spirit as physical responses, that's where we miss it. Why? Because we're spiritual. And Elisha says, open up his eyes so he can see there's more for you, so he can see that, yes, there's a brigade of soldiers, but beyond that, there's an army of heaven that is fighting for you, that's doing things that you cannot see. I think sometimes when we operate in the physical, here's the deal. Sometimes we worship, and we only worship when we feel God. Why? Because it's physical to us. But you don't worship when you feel God. You worship, and then you feel God. Why? Because worship is more spiritual than what we give it credit for. That's why whether you feel it or not, doesn't matter. Hey, newsflash, I'm a pastor, and there are a lot of Sundays I don't even want to go to church. Now, I don't know if that makes you not like me, but it's just the truth. But I'll tell you what I never do. I never let my physical emotions dictate my spiritual temperature, ever. There's more, but I got to close. I'm going to ask the band to come out. And the third thing is this right here. Listen, the enemy may surround you, but he cannot stop you. The second thing is breakthrough comes by operating in the spiritual, not the physical. And the third thing is this right here. And I just want to encourage you with this. When you call on God, God will answer you. That's the heart of everything that is about to happen in this room tonight. When you call on God, he will answer. It may not always be the way you think, but when you call on God, he will always answer. Elisha shows us the faith that when you turn to him, he's there to part the Jordan, to raise the dead. Elisha prays to open his eyes. They open. And then the story continues that Elisha then prays that the enemy, his eyes would be shut and hidden in plain sight was not only the victory that God had for him and the presence of God in their situation. But what was amazing to me is at the very end, God actually hides Elisha and his servant in plain sight of the enemy. And the enemy could no longer touch Elisha and his servants because he shut the eyes. What I believe in this place is when you call on God, he will answer you. Whatever you're walking through, he's here to meet you tonight. Whatever we face in this culture, in this world of ours, can I just tell you, he doesn't just want to work in you, Oaks Church. He wants to work through you. He wants to do miracles because of you and your faith. And so what I want you to do all over this place is I just want you to stand to your feet. Can you do that all over this place? And can you just lift your hands to the Lord? And I know, man, we don't have a, a song that, that, that immediately precedes this moment, but what we're doing is spiritual, right? So can you just lift your hands all over this place without the words of a song? Can you just begin to pray to the Lord? God, we're here to meet with you. Some of you may want to begin to pray in your prayer language. Some of you may just want to begin to call on God. Why? Because what you're doing in this place right now is not physical. I know it's your physical hands. It's not physical. I know it's your mouth and your words, but it's not physical. See, whether you feel it or not, we are spiritual beings. And God wants to operate in the spiritual in you, but also through you. It's the reason that Elisha says, look, we'll get to the problem. We'll get to the marriage. We'll get to the business. We'll get to the bankruptcy. But first, this is a bigger deal. I want them to recognize that worship, that prayer, that Bible reading, that all these other things, that listening to the Holy Spirit, being in obedience is spiritual. Can you just lift your voice all over this place? And can you just begin to pray? Some of you may want to sing in the Spirit. Some of you may just want to begin to pray in the Spirit. Some of you may want to pray with understanding. you got things you're carrying tonight. You want to pray for our nation. You want to pray for our city. You want to pray for South Dallas. Man, you want to begin to pray for our state. You want to begin to pray for our country. What I want you to do is just take a minute and just begin to call on the Lord all over this place, whether it's with understanding or maybe in the spirit, but can you just begin to pray? Lord, we love you. Come on, that's it. Come on, just begin to cry out to him. Just begin to pray. Begin to seek him. Lord, we need you. This nation needs you. This city needs you. Lord, our family needs you. Lord, awaken us 
from just recognizing the spiritual. Lord, help us to not be the servant that only sees the physical problems, but let us recognize that all of heaven is on our side. We may feel outnumbered in this nation, outnumbered in this city. We may feel outnumbered in our business, in our situation, but Lord, there are more with us. Here's what I wanna ask you to do tonight. There's a couple things that I feel like the Lord is laying on my heart, but the first one is this. I'm gonna ask you all over this place, if those of you that can, to step out and to come forward and just to find a place and just begin to intercede. I feel like for just a few moments, the Lord just wants us as a church, as a family to just intercede. You say intercede for what? I don't know. Maybe you're interceding for this nation, for your family, those in your family that's lost, but can you just begin to, cry out to the Lord? Can you lift your hearts and your hands and can you just begin to worship the Lord? Can you just begin to sing and say, God, we want to see you move. God, we want to see all of heaven moving. Come on, just another minute, another minute of just praying. Come on, come on, come on. What you're doing, God can move all over this place. Whether you come down or not, listen, where you are in your seat, just engage tonight. Engage tonight. And just recognize whether you feel it or not is not the issue. Whether you're moved emotionally is not the issue. Lord, we need you. We need you, oh God. Come on, just begin to sing a song to him. Begin to sing in the spirit. Some of you just begin to pray in the spirit. Begin to pray with understanding. Come on, lift your heart, lift your voice. Come on, that's it. Come on, let him remind you today. Lord, even if we're surrounded, we're not defeated. Lord, we exalt you, Lord. Come on, worship and exalt him in this place. Lord, we worship you. We worship you, Lord. Oh God, we worship you, Lord. Lord, we worship you, God. All of heaven move. All of heaven move. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. Lord, we pray more. We pray for more. More of your spirit, more of your love. More of your presence in this place. More of your presence, oh God. Lord, we want more. Come on, worship wherever you are. From the front to the back, the left to the right. Come on, worship the Lord.
lift your hands to the Lord all over this place. Come on, take 30 seconds. Can you just tell them in your own words? Borrow the words of these, this song and begin to pray it. Lord, we need you. Our kids need you. Our families need you. Lord, this nation needs you. Our city, our schools, Lord, they need you. Lord, we need you. We need you, we need you, we need you. What I love about this story is that Elisha recognized the problem. But the bigger problem to him was simply that the servant wasn't operating in the spirit. So can I just tell you, when you're seeking God, when you put God first, when you chase after him, Matthew 6.33 tells us everything else begins to snap in place. But I also understand that even in this story, it wasn't just about operating in the spiritual, that there was a physical problem. And Elisha simply prayed a prayer. Lord, blind their eyes as they're charging towards him. Tonight, I know this, is that with this many people in this room, that there are some of us in this room tonight and you feel outnumbered. You feel like there's opposition in your marriage. You feel like there's opposition in your kids who aren't serving the Lord. You feel like there's op opposition in your business. You feel like things, maybe there's an attack. Maybe you feel a little bit surrounded. I just believe tonight as we're praying that there's many of us that are gonna keep praying for our nation and keep praying for our city, keep praying for our church. But I just wonder if you're in this place tonight and you feel a little surrounded in whatever area, I just believe there's a church here tonight, this team, Pastor Chris and Kara, they have faith that God is gonna step into that situation and bring a breakthrough tonight. So if you're here and you feel like you're a little bit surrounded, I know we're crowded, it's okay, that, that's, that's gonna be fine. And as a matter of fact, if you're up in the front, just scoot up a little bit and then give some people room. And, and here's what I wanna do. If you need God to move in a situation, I want you to step out in your aisle and can you just come forward Step out in your aisle, come forward. If you're already down here, just lift your hand right where you are. And I just want to keep your hand for just a second because we're going to pray for you. We're going to lay hands on you and believe for a miracle to happen. If you're in your seat, just step out and come as close as you can and we're going to believe for breakthrough for you. Maybe you feel like it's opposition in your business or your finances, your future. Maybe it's your own health. Maybe you just feel like your health is, is, is crashing and, and everything around you is falling apart physically. Maybe, maybe it's not even just that, man. Maybe, honestly, it's mentally. You, you feel like you're battling depression. You feel like you're battling some things. I even sense that some people in this room, like you're, you're going through it. You got more words flying around. You're like my daughter's in that, in that money cage. Like you got words flying around in your head. And I just think that God can, God can stop all of that right now. And he can bring joy and restore peace into your life. And so here's the thing. A lot of you came forward. Just raise your hand all over this place if that's you. And you're saying, I need prayer. I need prayer. Here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I don't, I don't know exactly. If y'all got prayer team, let the prayer team go and do that. But if not, some of the staff, obviously. And then obviously some of our leaders and small group leaders. Can you make sure that everyone with a hand raised has one of our leaders, one of our prayer team, uh, man, one of our staff begin to pray for them, and we're gonna pray for breakthrough for them right now. We're gonna pray for breakthrough, and so keep your hand up until, until everybody's got, I got some people right here that, that need somebody to pray for them. I'm just trying to help as much as I can. I got some people, yeah, you got, you got them. She's dual wielding, I like that. All right, anybody, we got some people right here that need people that can pray for them, so some of our staff, some of our prayer team, leaders, I, I just believe tonight that God's gonna bring a breakthrough in this area. Now, here's what I want you to do. As we begin to pray, I don't want you to forget about what we're doing because this is still sp spiritual. And so what I want you to do is allow God to use you spiritually. Sometimes we pray with understanding. Sometimes we don't know what we're praying for, but the Spirit prays through us. They, and, and we start praying and interceding. What I want you to do is begin to intercede for things that you know about, but I also want you to allow God to intercede through you for the spirit to intercede through you for, for things in this nation, in this world that you may not even know what you're praying for. Can you just lock in spiritually tonight and let's touch heaven in this place and let's just begin to believe for breakthrough. Come on, as the band begins to sing, I just want you to lift your voices, your hearts. I want you to worship the Lord. We're gonna pray for some of those with their hands raised, but for the rest of us, can you lock in spiritually and can you just believe for a breakthrough to be able to be used by God and allow him to flow through you? Come on, all over this place. Let's begin to pray. I feel it in this room. Holy Spirit. 
In the Old Testament and stories like Dan just shared with us, they gave a shout of praise and a victory before the battle had been won. I just believe tonight there's been a victory. I believe tonight it's already happened. Whether you see it tomorrow or not, it's taken place. It's happened. So even before you can see the result, can we just give a shout of praise for the victory that God has brought to your life and to your marriage? to your home, to your family, to our church. Some of you, I believe you've been healed physically tonight. Some of you, I believe your marriage has been restored tonight. You'll look back and tonight was the night that God did in a moment what it's taken 20 years to do. Others of you, you may, you may not see it right away. It doesn't mean the battle hasn't already been won. So we give victory, we give glory and honor, and we give praise to the name of Jesus who is faithful with us in it to fight our battles, to go before us, victory in the name of Jesus. Amen? Come on, one more time, let's just celebrate. Give thanks. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. Hallelujah. I don't know about you. Yeah. Thank you so much for allowing me to share this. I just felt in my spirit really strongly, and I was waiting for a moment I feel like there's some people in this room who are literally paralyzed in fear of the opposition of the enemy and your circumstance. And I just felt very led that the, the Holy Spirit would want you to realize that you are authorized with the spiritual authority to ask the Holy Spirit to open your eyes to what he is doing in your life. You don't have to wait for an Elisha. 
You don't have to wait for Pastor Chris to come and lay hands on you. You don't have to wait for someone to come and speak over you. You have the spiritual authority to stand up and say, open my eyes, Lord, to see what is going on in the spirit realm in the middle of my situation. So I just want to encourage you that do not let the enemy intimidate you. Do not let the enemy paralyze you. Speak out. Let your words be filled with faith, and your eyes will be open. So let's just pray that right now. It's a word from the Lord. So, Lord, for those who have felt spiritually paralyzed, may they in the spirit realm right now get up and run, get up and jump, Get up and praise your name. They're, they're no longer paralyzed. They're no longer lame. Lord, they're free to run. They're free to celebrate. They have received authority from you. So God, right now, may they claim that authority and may they rise up in the spiritual realm. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Thank you for that word, Rachel. I don't know about you, but I wrote down like 10 things that Dan said uh, that just like were game changing, but maybe uh, you probably did too. You probably have one or more, but the one for me that just stands out is um, I don't worship, uh, I don't worship, what was it? I, I don't worship um, before I feel, I get my journal right there. Get my, what, Dan, what, where, where are you, Dan? Right there. What did you say about worship? It meant so much to me, I forgot it. That's it. That's it. it you're, you're one-liners, man. You're tricky. If you don't get the first part, you've lost the last part. You don't worship when you feel God. You worship and then you feel God. I am, I'll just admit to you, too often I'm led by my emotions. <laughs> when we worship, God begins to inhabit our praise and our worship. And so that was one, Dan, that obviously just, just, just stuck deep in my soul. Thank you. Hey, thank you for being here. Thank you for speaking over this church. Would you show Pastor Dan some appreciate? What a great word. What a great word. A word that moved us forward tonight. I say it a lot, but I really mean it. I mean, look around. Look around this room. I'm proud of you for being here tonight. I'm proud of you for making the sacrifice it took to get here on a Wednesday night and to lean in. God's going to honor that in your life. And so I'm just going to pray a prayer of blessing over you now. If you want to stay and pray, you're welcome to do that. If you want to go pick up your kids, we would encourage you to do that. I know there's some probably some workers who would love for you to, to come and get your kids tonight. But Lord, I just bless all your people tonight. Thank you for the word that you deposited into our hearts. May we not just be hearers of the word, but doers of the word, Lord. And, and I just pray that we would chew on this and just take this before you every day and continue to deepen this, this work in us and God, we look forward to gathering again this weekend and worshiping and celebrating and being together again. So we love you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I love you, Oaks Church. God bless you as you go. We'll see you Sunday morning. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining Oaks Church on our YouTube channel. Our prayer is that you were encouraged and your faith was strengthened today. That's right. And we want to let you know that we would love to connect with you through our online family in our OC Online Facebook group. To do that, you can like our Oaks Church page and click Join Group. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel and press the bell for notifications. You'll have access to life-giving sermons and worship that will be a blessing to you and your family. Yeah, we'd love to have you join us live for our Sunday and Wednesday services. We hope you have a great day today. Thank you for watching and God bless.